Welcome to the East Jordan Methodist Church Sunday Service. And now, here's Pastor Jim Miller. Well, good morning. This is Pastor Jim from the East Jordan Methodist Church. Rejoice this day again. I say rejoice. My prayer for all of you today is that you would begin today to live your days with Jesus. Take the Holy Spirit as your guide, and Jesus as your teacher, and the Lord God as your Father. Let us pray. O oh God, the joy of this day, the hope for every day to come, move in our midst. Fill us with your Spirit and make us one. May our words, as well as our actions, and even the secret thoughts of our hearts, be a part of your worship this hour. O oh Lord of great power displayed in sacrificial love, we pray focus upon the one who died for all, your only begotten Son, Jesus. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanks. I'll be a
The scripture that I've chosen for today's message comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The word from the letter to the Philippians for you, God's people. Have you heard the old story about the young man who enthusiastically joined a monastery? Wanting the highest and the best, the young monk immediately took the vow of silence. The solemn vow meant the monk could only speak two words a year, and those were reserved for his annual evaluation with the abbot. The first year passed, and the abbot asked the monk how he was doing. Without hesitation, the monk replied, Food bad. Another year passed and the abbot again asked the monk how he was doing. The monk replied, bed hard. When asked for an evaluation the third year, the young monk said, I quit. Well, said the abbot, I'm not surprised. All you've done since you've come here is complain, complain, complain. Well, today I want to talk to you about attitude of gratitude. Gratitude is not only the greatest of all virtues, it's the parent of all others. Yet in our self-seeking, materialistic, look out for number one kind of world, gratitude is seldom mentioned in studies of psychology and largely ignored in the disciplines of religion. How about it? Are you a grateful person? Gratitude is, is a way of thinking. It's a matter of the mind. Paul put it this way. Whatever is true and honorable, just and pure, pleasing and commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. That comes from Philippians 4, verse 8. Gratitude is a learned behavior. We are not born grateful. Cheryl and I have taken two kittens into our house. That's why we look so tired today. You ought to see them. <laughs> you know, when you're, when you're young, and one or two years old, when you're kids, it's all about you. When you're kittens, it's all about them. Hold me, feed me, change me, rock me, walk me, and do it right now. Kittens have their ways of keeping adults in line. Any alteration is a battle of the wills. What is cute for the kittens sometimes isn't necessarily quite cute or tolerable to two septuagenarians. Paul said it well. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put childish ways behind me. I constantly find adults who have missed that maturation process. Today I ask you to think about what you're thinking about, or better put, what do you have on your mind right now? And when is this going to be over? What am I going to do when I get home? Who are the people who hurt me? 
life is hard. Paul says we should think on these things, the true, the honorable, the just, the pure, the pleasing, the commendable. This is not a a list reserved for the saints. This is a pagan list of desirable virtues. He took it from the Roman world in which the Philippians lived. Even unbelievers aspire to the finer thoughts of life. Whatever is just, right, and pleasing, set your mind on things like that. A great British preacher, John Henry Jowett, said, Gratitude is a vaccine, an antitoxin, and an antiseptic. Gratitude is a vaccine to prevent the invasion of a disgruntled, discouraged spirit. Gratitude is an antitoxin to destroy the poisons of cynicism and criticalness. Gratitude is an antiseptic to soothe and heal the most troubled spirit. Fill your minds today with the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, the things to praise, not the things to curse. Cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Gratitude, in a sense, is a way of being. Gratitude is a matter of the heart. When it comes to worry and anxiety, take it to the Lord in prayer and let the peace of God guard your hearts. Let the Lord set up a military patrol around your soul. If you lose your heart, you have lost your reason to live. What is the peace of God that passes all understanding? I'm not sure I understand all of that, but I want to tell you the times I've tasted it, the times I've known it down in my soul, I wouldn't trade it for anything, nothing in the whole world. A neighborhood library offered a community competition for the best painting symbolizing peace. The award-winning artwork would be prominently displayed in the library. When all the entries were in, the judges narrowed the competition down to two. One painting featured a majestic lake, so tranquil and still that the lush hills behind it were perfectly mirrored in its reflection. Above was a blue sky. Around it were blooming wild flowers. Behind it were deer grazing in the meadows. It was a peace to behold. It was a picture of peace. The other finalists portrayed a terrible storm. Winds blowing, trees bending, debris flying through the air. The sky was dark. The sight was stark. And there was not a person in sight. There was, however, a bird perched on a limb on one of those bended trees. Observers got the impression that the bird was singing. To which painting would you award the prize of peace? The judges chose the bird. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is consolation of the heart. Paul wrote this from a Roman prison where he was sentenced to die. Though billows roll, he keeps my soul, my heavenly Father watches over me. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. From Philippians 4, verse 6. A district superintendent preached a 30-minute sermon in one of his inner city churches on the subject of gratitude. He concluded the sermon by saying, and remember, However small the gift, always be grateful to the Lord. The offering followed the sermon, and when no one could find this offering plates, the district superintendent offered his hat for the collection. The hat was passed, but when it came back to the good reverend, he shook it carefully, tipped it cautiously, and discovered it to be empty. The congregation braced themselves for the response. But the clergyman turned to the altar, raised his hands, and holding the empty hat in the air, prayed, I thank thee, gracious God, that in your good mercy I have today gotten my hat back. Amen. 
In the stress and struggle of life, some of us have lost our hats, not to mention our self-esteem, our hope for tomorrow, our confidence for today. Can you rejoice in the Lord anyway? Is there a song in your heart that the world never gave? Is there a peace the world cannot take away? Gratefulness is more than a momentary emotion. It is a profoundly spiritual and powerfully healing state of being. Gratitude is a way of living. So Paul says, keep on doing the things you have learned and received. Gratitude is a way of life. Jesus was our earthly model of gratitude. Like every good Jew, Jesus thanked God before and after each meal. I've thought about that recently. How often do we say thank you after we eat? Maybe we ought to try that. He was raised to be thankful for the food he received. In Sabbath school, or Sunday school, he he learned to pray the Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Such were the prayers that came from Jesus' lips. In his hymn of jubilation, Jesus said, Thanks, God, for hiding things from the clever and revealing them to children. The upper room where death was imminent in the air, he took some bread and gave thanks. Jesus was grateful for the birds of the air, the lilies of the field, the critters that roam the countryside, and the creatures that swim in the sea. He lived a life of gratitude. Do you? To speak gratitude is courteous and pleasant. To enact gratitude is generous and noble. But to live gratitude is to touch heaven. A Texas businessman who had enjoyed 10 years of quality life after having a heart transplant reflected on the difference this new heart made in his life. In addition to this being a miracle of medicine, said David Saucier, For a new heart to become part of a living me is a miracle of God. Many people ask me if the heart transplant changed my life. It has in the following ways. Number one, I have a renewed sense of urgency. I know that if I want to stop and smell the roses, I'd better do it now. Number two, there is gratitude. I do not understand this miracle. All I can do is accept it and feel grateful for each additional day. And three, finally, I walk a little closer to God. When someone goes with you through the valleys of the shadows of death, you develop a special bond with them. My God and I went through this transplant together. Let me ask you, are you living a life of gratitude? Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Live a life of gratitude. Amen. Now hear the benediction. May the peace of God enfold us. May the love of God uphold us. May the wisdom of God control us. Have a good week. Amen. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing and trust.
Up to their eternal. 